A CT scan is an X-ray procedure that creates cross-sectional images with the help of computer processing. CT images are more detailed than conventional X-ray images and can reveal bones as well as soft tissue and organs. A conventional X-ray uses a fixed tube that sends X-rays in only one direction, while a CT scanner uses a motorized X-ray source that shoots narrow beams of X-rays as it rotates around the patient. There are special digital X-ray detectors located directly opposite the X-ray source. As the X-ray passes through the patient, they are picked up by the detectors and transmitted to a computer. Image slices can either be displayed individually in two-dimensional form or stacked together to generate a three-dimensional image that can reveal abnormal structures or help the physician plan and monitor treatments. X-ray computed tomography, X-ray CT is a technology that uses computer-processed X-rays to produce tomographic images, virtual slices, of specific areas of the scanned object, allowing the user to see what is inside it without cutting it open. Digital geometry processing is used to generate a three-dimensional image of the inside of an object from a large series of two-dimensional radiographic images taken around a single axis of rotation. Medical imaging is the most common application of X-ray CT. Its cross-sectional images are used for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes in various medical disciplines. The rest of this article discusses medical imaging X-ray CT. Industrial applications of X-ray CT are discussed at industrial computer tomography scanning. Because X-ray CT is the most common form of CT in medicine and various other contexts, the term computer tomography alone, or CT, is often used to refer to X-ray CT, although other types exist, such as positron emission tomography, PET, and single photon emission computed tomography, SPECT. Older Less preferred terms that also refer to X-ray CT are computed axial tomography, CAT scan, and computer-assisted tomography. X-ray CT is a form of radiography, although the word radiography used alone usually refers, by wide convention. PET scan creates 3D images of the body. It does this by using radioactive tracers, which are usually administered to a patient through intravenous injection. The tracers are made up of carrier molecules that are tightly bonded to a radioactive atom called an isotope. The carrier molecule can interact with or bind to specific proteins or sugars in the body. The carrier molecule that will be used depends on what the doctor is looking for. If she suspects cancer or is monitoring a known cancer's growth, she may use FDG, a modified form of glucose, which gets absorbed by tissues. When tissues absorb a lot of glucose, it may indicate a cancerous tumor. The radiation from the tracers poses little danger to the patient since they quickly pass out of the body. The isotope produces small particles called positrons, which interact with surrounding electrons. This interaction results in the complete annihilation of both particles, releasing two photons that speed off in opposite directions. The detectors in the PET scanner measure these photons and use this information to create an image of the distribution of FDG in the body. MRIs use protons, which are abundant in the human body. All protons spin, creating a small magnetic charge. When a strong magnetic field is introduced, as is the case in an MRI machine, the protons align with that field. The MRI technician then introduces a radio frequency pulse that disrupts the proton and forces it either into a 90 degree or 180 degree realignment with the static magnetic field. Since the radio frequency pulse pushed the proton against its nature, once this pulse is turned off, the protons realign with that magnetic field, releasing electromagnetic energy along the way. The MRI is able to detect this energy and is able to differentiate various tissues based on how quickly they release energy after the pulse is turned off.
In addition to showing anatomic structures, functional ultrasound shows color image maps that can indicate the softness or hardness of specific tissues, movement and velocity of tissue or blood, and other physical characteristics. One type of functional ultrasound is Doppler ultrasound. If you've ever listened to how a siren sounds as it approaches, passes, and drives away, you are hearing what's called the Doppler effect. The waveform is compressed as the ambulance approaches, making it sound higher pitched, and it's stretched as the ambulance departs, making it sound lower. Doppler ultrasound uses the same principle to determine the speed and direction of the blood inside your arteries. The transducer is held at an angle to the blood vessel, and the altered frequency of the echo returning to the transducer from the blood flow tells the computer the blood's speed and direction. This information is displayed in different colors on the final image to show changes in or absence of blood flow, indicating blocked or narrowing blood vessels, decreased circulation, heart valve defects, blood clots, bulging arteries, or even the presence of new blood vessels and flow in tumors. Another form of functional ultrasound, elastography, can be used to differentiate tumors from healthy tissue based on the tissue's relative stiffness. Healthy tissue and benign tumors tend to be compressible, unlike malignant tumors, which are more firm. This compression was originally done manually, but newer elastography systems send out high-pressure pulses that compress target tissues by a predefined amount of force and display the resulting compression levels in various coded colors. Hello, I'm Hector Lopez and I direct the ultrasound research portfolio at NIBIB. I'd like to speak about a success story that resulted from NIBIB funding. It's the GEV scan a miniature palm-sized ultrasound imaging system. It has capabilities previously available only on mainframe ultrasound machines that cost more than 10 to 20 times as much. I'm holding in my hand an ultrasound probe. What makes this an ultrasound probe is this little area on the top where the transducers are. There are typically 64 to 128 elements in that. But the rest of the ultrasound scanner is all image and signal processing. The biggest challenges that we've met was the interconnect phase that had to be done between these transducer elements and the underlying electronics. Uh, by the end of the grant period, we were able to meet our goals for uh, resolution and for imaging performance, and were able to demonstrate that in a laboratory bench setup. And IBIB support proved to be invaluable to setting the stage for further expansion of medical ultrasound into new areas. Um, we've got color Doppler. No kidding. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh my God. And ten years ago, this thing would have cost yeah. like yeah, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand. Yeah, hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Gosh darn. That's pretty slick. It is. They do cardiac. It does cardiac very well. Yeah. 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 Uh, one level menu of additional controls, a lot yeah. like your personal right. camera that you have. Just choose a, choose a yeah. selected preset if needed. So that's got a cardiac preset. Yeah. So, yeah. 